appreciate the support, and I'll uh, be doing a very sort of intensely audiovisual uh, presentation. So what, li I, what I'd like to do, instead of uh, waiting till the end to do a Q and A, I would love to get your reactions to the video and the music you see after each song, so that we we, we have a conversation, uh, you know, during like while it's still fresh in your mind. And at the end, I would love to get your take on of, of all the clips you saw, which one is your favorite and why, you know, things like that. So, let me introduce myself first. My name is Ramsey Salty. You have my name right there. I've been teaching here at Stanford for 16 years. Were you born when I started? Yeah. <laughs> you were probably like a toddler. We have a wide variety of Arabic classes. We used to be two professors in Arabic. We are now eight, so or six at this point. So it's uh, growing, and the uh, demand for Arabic is growing. So I think any one of you who read the title and came today, uh, sh uh, you should be very proud of yourselves because we are so heavily invested in the Middle East and in the Arab world, and everything is Middle East. We hear this and terrorism and whatever. That um, you know, I think it's time for some Arab Americans like me to stand up and say, while all of this awful stuff is going on, and it is going on, though the media isn't always very fair about reporting it. Uh, but at the same time, there is this amazing amount of talent that is coming out of the area. And I think sometimes they go, well, despite the situation, I say, no, I think, you know, it's because of the situation as well. Because when does art flourish the most is when people are really in dire need of expressing themselves. And I look around at you young people, and I think there is a version of you, Nate, yeah. and a version of you, Eric, and a version of you... Uh, Laurel, sorry. Laurel. And uh, a version of uh, you... Miyuki. Miyuki. Yeah. And a version of you... Join. Join. So, uh, in the Arab world, you know, young people such as yourselves around your age who are trying to just get the opportunities that we take for granted here. Not just opportunities at studying at like a university, but the opportunity of being able to record a song. There are so many artists and poets and, uh, and singers, you know, who are just amazing. So uh, I wanted to kind of take you on a quick chronological uh, journey through what is the Arab Spring and how it began and uh, then test you, you are my test audience today, about these clips. I tried to choose clips that have English translation, so that <coughs> you, know, you, you got, but even if you, if you they don't have an, an English translation, I think it's still interesting to hear your, how the visual impacted you, how the sound impacted you, and also you know, the fact that there's like Arabic hip-hop, who knew Arabic hip-hop? It's like the most popular genre, because hip-hop is a genre that requires resistance, and this is all about resistance. So uh, hopefully we'll, uh, this will impact you, and will impact us all to, to make a change <coughs> when it comes to our vision of the Arab world. Um, in addition to me being a teacher here for 16 years, I have my own radio show. So I spin. I'm 50 years old and I talk like a teenager, but I, I spin Arabic hip-hop every Thursday on KCSU, Stanford 90.1 FM, which is the college, our university's the radio station, which reaches all over the Bay Area, so we're not like it's internet streaming, though we stream online, it's a live show, and so I've been doing that for five years, and I wanted to do a show about Arabic that's like positive, about Arab issues that are, uh, that is positive, so I called it Arabology. And so Arabology is my show. It's been on for a few, uh, uh, several years. And um, on the top of your pages, there is a link to the podcasts. I think I have about 90 different shows, all available online. You click and you listen. Each show is categorized by what is the topic. So it could be like women singers from the Middle East, LGBT singers from the Middle East. You know, I mean, things you wouldn't associate with the Middle East. I mean, these, these people are there. And uh, things are happening socially. And so I think you'll, you'll enjoy that. I, do, I also put a link to my blog. I put my email because feel free from now on, if you are ever anywhere and you hear something Arabic and you're like, hey, Ramsey might enjoy this, drop me a line, right? Just tell me, go, Ramsey, I was listening to this song that came on or something on YouTube. Either what are they talking about or do you feel that this fits in to what we are calling Arab Spring uh, music? So, in terms of the Arab Spring, do you guys know when it began? What year? 2010, December. Look how specific we can be. 
in fact, like on a certain day in December 2010, and do you know <coughs> what country it started in? Do you know? Uh, Tell us. Tunisia. Tunisia. My home country. So I brought Nuna from Tunisia. I know just for today. No, I'm kidding. She's she's here. She's a proud Tunisian American. Hello. Hi. How are you, Nuna? Can you make sure she gets? <coughs> yeah. So it started in Tunisia, and up till then, the Arab world was ruled by like you know dictators, and there was very limited freedom of speech and whatever. So they called it the Arab Spring because people started to rise and they looked for a better tomorrow. And it started on a very special day in December, a very kind of sad day because there was a guy named Muhammad Bouaziz. He was a vegetable cart seller, you know, go around town selling vegetables. What do you know? Tell me. Um, didn't he like, because he couldn't find a job, so he like set himself on fire and that like sparked. Oh, you're amazing, exactly. That one man, that one incident, sparked what became a, a worldwide phenomenon, which is the Arab Spring. Not that many <coughs> revolutions can be traced to one day because they bubble over years and then this. You know? But it was specifically that. The guy, as you said, uh, was so fed up. He was educated. <coughs> he was seeing his educated friends get, get jobs, and here he is selling vegetables in a cart when he had like a PhD. And so he, to, to, he made that statement, and boy, the Tunisian people rose up in support and against the president of the time, whose name was Zain al-Abidin. And, um, and so the, uh, that sparked what they called the Jasmine Revolution, because out of all the revolutions that happened, Tunisia still relatively was the uh, most peaceful, and I would say the most successful. You know? So uh, it began with, with uh, that act, and then a rapper, named, and this is where we can look at our list, number one, his name is El General. And El General, who comes from Tunisia, his real name is uh, Hamada Ben Amel, and he's a rapper, and he released this video we're gonna watch. It's not high quality, I mean, he was working underground, he was afraid the government was gonna know who he was or find out his real name. And so he, uh, he released this video, he begins with the president, like a little footage of the president at the time, and then just listen to the rap, uh, because this video, which he released on YouTube, got him arrested. It got him, he was tortured, he disappeared for a while, and everybody thought, oh, they killed him. But then they had tortured him, but hadn't quite killed him. And he came back, and he's now doing music, but he was heavily scarred. So El General should be the first song we play today in the first clip, because this video sparked people to go into the streets and ask for change. So after this, he was found. <coughs> but this is the original release I found for you. North Africa and the Middle East. Allied warplanes have gone into action to stop Libyan leader Saeed in Cairo a day ahead. Yeah, so you got an idea, I think, from just hearing the lyrics and the, his voice is very powerful. So, of course, he borrowed from uh, uh, rap and hip hop in the West and made it apply to his, uh, to his own situation. So, he was the first uh, uh, singer, artist 
to have been uh, tortured, but unfortunately not the last. And it's sad to say that the singers who survive today have become icons, but they've suffered so much to earn that name. It wasn't really fame they were after, but social change. So it, uh, we're going to stay in Tunisia <coughs> and go to a woman. And no, it's not Noura over here. Although she is, she looks like you a little bit. Her name is Amal Mathluthi. So she is number two on our list. She's also from Tunisia. And like other talented singers who you know don't have recording contracts, they don't have CDs, they don't have opportunities. There's no uh, TV shows or uh, managers. She they sing in the street. So she took her guitar. She went into the street and she sang a song called "My Word Is Free." Free meaning like unencumbered. I'm gonna sing out loud. So here she is. Her name is Amal Mathusi. This is actual footage of her during the beginning of the revolution in the street before she was hassled and arrested. So this is her when she started. Look how simple, look how, you know, without even a guitar at the time. Well, she was hassled for being a very free woman who spoke about women's rights as well as the rights of all people to democracy and freedom of speech, etc. I'm glad to say that although she had to leave Tunis because of the hassle she felt, she actually now is a world-class <coughs> star we're bringing her to Stanford in October. I've been working with like six other professors to bring her. So if you like her, make sure you, you keep that name in mind. And October, she's coming to the Bing. She's going to perform in front of thousands. So uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, she, she, was, she was at the Nobel Prize ceremony where she sang the same song you just heard, only listen to how polished it sounds now and how, uh, how she's still very emotional, but it's very, uh, it's a far trip from where she was. spilled into Egypt, but uh, what do you think of the Tunisian music of the Arab Spring? How weird was it for you, how foreign sounding, or how much did you, were you able to relate, despite the fact that maybe you don't speak Arabic? Do you speak Arabic Arab? No. You should take my class. I teach Arabic here. That's the end. <laughs> anyway, what, uh, well, how, how did it impact you, either El General or Kamal? Mm, yeah, I think well, both in their own ways, I think, so I don't speak Arabic, but I think, like, just, like, the sound of her voice was, like, so beautiful, and it gave me chills, and, like, I didn't know what she was singing um, in the first video, so I was, like, kind of confused, but it's, like, something, obviously, that was dear to her heart, mm -hmm. and it made a lot more sense with the subtitles, um, and with the first one, it was, like, it was just, like, really powerful, yeah, and, like, yeah. like, I really felt, like, the energy, but in a completely different way. I love that you said that, because my radio show, you know, that uh, I air every week, I play the songs in Arabic, but I speak about them in English. And then I wait for listeners to call in and tell me what they thought because I can't put subtitles on the radio. Um, so I love that she said that even without the subtitles, she felt it. But then when she heard the same song with the subtitles, you weren't surprised to read the lyrics. You're like, 
I know she wasn't thinking about a day on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so very good. Anybody else that uh, was impacted by the Tunisian soundtrack? Or you're waiting to go to Egypt to react? Yes, Nate? Well, I liked El General a lot. Really? Um, he reminded me. I actually took a class about um, like U.S. Middle East relations oh, wow. earlier in my high school life. Um, and I looked at Omar Fendham a little bit. Oh my gosh, he's, he's coming, yes. So he like reminded me a lot of him, yeah. Coming to Stanford in October as well. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta come, I'll take you backstage. All right, I'll, I'll email you about You can do my talk today, I owe you big. Uh, what is your name? Oh, I'm Angela, sorry. Angela, no, I'll remember Angela. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I think <coughs> let's move to Egypt, because you know, the Tunisian revolution spilled into Egypt. And Egypt at the time had a, the president who was uh, Mubarak, and uh, Mubarak had been in uh, power for like decades. I mean, what kind of president is in? So obviously the Egyptian people were very unhappy, but didn't quite, weren't quite able to stand up in the streets. They were afraid. But when they saw what happened in Tunisia, they were very inspired by that. And so uh, they went to the streets to Tahrir Square. And so Tahrir Square in the middle of Cairo became emblematic of the place where it was happening. And these young people, they were really risking their lives. I mean. To what degree they, uh, they must have felt oppressed and, and uh, robbed of opportunities. So, uh, you know, they would sing with their guitars and they would get shot and they would get kidnapped by the police and by the state. And, you know, and one of the people who did that was Rami Hassan, um, and you're going to see him. He took his guitar and despite everything, in front of like tanks, he would stand up and, and, and sing for freedom. And they would be like, this guy's crazy. I mean, the tank is like that. So they would arrest him. They took him. He was tortured so heavily. I debated whether I should show you the video where he's tortured. It's part of a documentary that won an Oscar called The Square. So if you want to watch The Square, you'll see, actually show him after he was tortured. I chose to kind of have him talk about his uh, torture. Here he is in, uh, in The Square. <laughs> وعايز اقول لاي حد من اي طائفه او من اي فكر موجود ما تسمعش كلام الطاقه بتوعك ما تبقاش تابع خليك تابع لبلدك خليك تابع لمصر بس ما تنساش الشهداء احنا مش محتاجين ننزل دلوقتي ننكس اشخاص مش محتاجين ننزل الشارع عشان اشخاص الحد الوحيد اللي يستحق يكون رئيس للبلد دي so that's him in the square. So uh, he, his song that he initially sang with the guitar in the square uh, became, uh, you know, a hit, and then eventually it became very polished along with the music video. So from that little tortured young man in, <coughs> in the square to uh, an iconic Egyptian singer now. Here's a song, it's called Bread and Freedom. <laughs> Before, no, no. what did you think after like the briefing? 
after um, this music yeah, video? Yeah, seeing him speak, seeing him sing, seeing him before and after the, the torture. And what did you think of the music and the words? Uh, he physically looked different. I saw like how he, he got really skinny and it was surprising because he looked like a really built man in the previous video and then when he was interviewed he looked like he was starved yeah. and in this music video it is a lot of anger and views passion and it made me really think about the difference between the music we hear here and the music over there yeah and I it's like what you said. yeah uh, but did you feel like like the music the beat and whatever for those of you who live in america yes there it I, that's what I, I, I completely felt it, and that's what I really like about music, is because you don't really need to, you can, it's some, it's a language that, like, everyone can really get. Yeah. So, like, that's why you can really feel it, and, like, of course, knowing what they're saying would be even better, but, like, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I tried to, you know, get your subtitles on, on things, but frankly, I don't think they're really needed, yeah. and my radio show proves it, I mean, most of my listeners in California and those who stream everywhere don't speak Arabic. Yet they love the song and they start playing it and they like the beat and they like the passion and the voice. And I think so. Maybe the good news is that he survived the torture and he is now living in Sweden where he is releasing even more powerful music. He's getting more and more radical. Not like he got somewhere so he got comfortable and rested on his laurels. No, he continues to, to do that. Um, you like Rami song? Mm -hmm. Did well, you? Like, I, yeah, like I like the beat. Like, it was like. Yeah, I know. I, I used hardly, uh, I should teach, I wish I had time to teach you Arabic. <laughs> we could sing along, you know. Um, but that pretty much it? takes care of the, uh, uh, of uh, Rami Aysan, who's iconic. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, another group, and that is, look at their name. Not karaoke. Cairo, you know, oh. <laughs> sorry, because they're from Cairo, and this group really uh, mobilized the masses. So Cairo Key, and um, I, uh, they're right here at number four. Uh, if you like them, you know, always go to YouTube. You can find a lot more than what I have, what I've done here. But uh, did, how did you relate, Eric, to Cairo Key? I liked the. You like the sound. Yeah, because we're going to have different like genres going on. Uh, number five on your list is the Masar Iqbari. They're kind of similar to Kairoki, so I'll skip them for now, but they're worth looking at. And then the, uh, number six is Iskenderella. <laughs> so now they're playing between what city? Alexandria. Alexandria in Egypt, the city, not Cairo, but Alexandria is called in Arabic Iskenderia. So they're like Iskenderia and Cinderella, Iskenderella. <laughs> You know, the, so another clever title and another Egyptian band that uh, had quite a bit of uh, influence on young people. They all continue to record even today. Um, so they have an official <coughs> clip here at number 15. You can watch maybe at home because I kind of want to go to Yusra Al Hawari. You are going to like this young woman. She is an Egyptian accordionist. And she, the, the song seems so simple, you think she's singing to children, uh, but they're very powerful. This song is called The Wall. And so she takes her, her accordion, you know, and she looks like a you know, regular young woman in the street. She sings like, and people pass by, oh, how cute, she's singing with an accordion. But and though the song sounds simplistic, maybe if you look at the lyrics, you can tell me what do you think she's talking about. And uh, there's a verse there that will make you laugh going to talk about peeing. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
know. I mean, it sounds like maybe a cute little children's song. Ooh, the man stood and peed in front of the... But, I mean, there's, I think, a lot more going on, right? What do you think she's talking about beyond the obvious? Yes, King. It could be about the system that Mubarak has kind of put in place. Oh, wait, this isn't... Uh... No, but it is Egypt. You're absolutely oh, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 she is yeah. Egyptian, yeah. and she was under Mubarak. Yeah. So, so the system that he put in place, that, like, why would the wall represent that system? Because it's kind of impenetrable from the outside. You kind of have to be on the other side, right. too. And so what do people do? Like, you know, you're, you're being oppressed, there's a wall around you. You can't break it down, but you hate it, and you disrespect it, and you hate that it's disrespecting you. So what can you do? You can't hit it. You might as well pee on it. I mean, <laughs> that's going to be as, as symbolic as you can get, you know? Like, here's a message for Mubarak. So uh, she ended up with uh, her own TV show on Egyptian TV now. It's called Microphone, right? Is she on Microphone or is that somewhere else? Yeah, but she has another one, right? um, a variety show where she brings unknown artists from the street and tries to give them the exposure that she never got initially. So that's Yustra Hawari, you can see her on your list over there. And uh, so we're still in Egypt, we need to move to, you know, the, the uh, Arab Spring Revolution, Revolt. I hate to call it Spring these days because I think it's more of an Arab winter now, but that doesn't mean it's the end. Uh, so Libya, right, it went into Libya. And then of course, you know, the president of Libya, Gaddafi, was killed. And now Libya's going through turmoil. People say, oh, well, maybe it was better under Gaddafi. I don't know. Is it better to live under a dictator or make a change and hope that it's going to happen? So when people say the Arab Spring didn't work, I say the Arab Spring isn't done. We're now maybe in the Arab winter spring, but it's a necessary state. I don't know any revolution in the world that like worked in two years, you know. It's a process. And I think what's happening now is a necessary step towards something better. So, from Libya, you got Ibn Thabit, which is translated as the son of steadiness. And he became the Rami Hassam of Libya, the El General of Libya. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think they are very similar. Yeah. In fact, I think they were copying a little bit mm -hmm. of El General and Rami Aysam and mm -hmm. others, but applying it to, to Libya. So, of course, that song, if you saw it, they, they, they mentioned the word Muammar in it, in the subtitles. Of course, that is Muammar Gaddafi, who was the president. So, again, he's addressing it to Muammar Gaddafi, whereas El General was addressing his song to the president of Tunis at the time, who was in an Abidin. Um, so, another... Uh, a, another rapper from Libya is Khaled over here, featuring Loki. That is something um, you can check out on your own. By the way, this list of all my video, this playlist, is available publicly, and I put even a link for you to my YouTube channel. You go there, click on playlist, and you'll find this list. So if any video, uh, you wanted to finish it, or watch it again, or share it, it's all in the same order for you. Um, and then I want to move to Algeria. Was there really an Arab Spring in Algeria? Not really. I mean, out of all the countries in North Africa, Algeria had the least bit of revolution. Um, there was still, you know, anger in the streets, but not massively. And one of the people who came out of this as an iconic figure in Algerian resistance is Suad Massey. 
She's amazing. I love this woman. She, all she needs is a guitar, and she gets on stage, and she enchants everyone. She doesn't need uh, a lot of uh, high. She, she doesn't need a lot of uh, you know hoopla to, to sing. And how do you know she's successful? She got kicked out of Algeria. They, they didn't want her there. She was dangerous. <coughs> so she continues to record amazing songs. Here's it's very soothing. I think you're going to enjoy her. What do you think? Soothing, yeah. <laughs> and kind of goes with listen to the silence uh, theme. Uh, very different, though, right? Than the kind of hip so. So I didn't want to imply that only hip hop gained popularity, but even this kind of acoustic singing. Did, did you like her voice? Am I prejudiced in saying she sounds amazing? <laughs> She's very good. <laughs> I'm working on getting her to Stanford. It's <laughs> very hard to get to. Um, so, so Han Massey again is. Uh, I put a couple of videos, but I think we're watching one is enough. And the male figure from Algeria, Rashid Taha. Have you heard of this guy? He's been around for like 20, 30 years. But with the uh, Arab Spring, he decides he's like 50, and he's he's like what the guy from the Rolling Stones. He's still around, <laughs> and he gets on stage and he talks to uh, the immigrants. Now, at the time, people were immigrating from Algeria very quickly because they wanted a better life. I don't blame them. We've all seen immigrants sink in the Mediterranean trying to get a better life. His idea is to, for immigrants to stay. But this was recorded before the awful events started happening, where I, if, I, if I was there, I would have laughed too. One wants to stay. An immigrant doesn't easily leave. But, so his, his the song is about an immigrant. And yes, he's older, but he's got this like ah, voice. Rah, rah. He's known for that. <laughs> and here he is in concert singing Yaraya, Oh Immigrant. <laughs> By the way, if you want to be Arabic, you can clap to the beat. <coughs> So what did you think of this kind of music? It's not really rap, it's definitely not like soft ballads. Did you like it? You liked the beat and the kind of repetitious beat? Yeah. This is called dry music. And this kind of music rules over North Africa. Uh, Tunisia has dry. Uh, Algeria and Morocco love dry. The word dry comes from the Arabic word rai. Rai means opinion. So it's opinionated music, you know? It's not like, my boyfriend didn't call me music. No, <laughs> this is more like, you know, hey, immigrants, stay here, stick with the, with the hard times. Um, so that's, that's from Algeria. From Morocco, I picked one. It doesn't have subtitles, but I think you'd enjoy the visuals, especially the way the video ends. His name is Amin, A-U-B, and here is Moroccan rap.
So what do you think that was about? You saw people with the masks and a little girl, and of course the singer. What do you think that symbolized? Take a chance. Like with the flower, and she's in color and there it's like black and white. Well, let me tell you my interpretation. That doesn't mean that's the correct answer. I was just thinking of ISIS, ISIL. You know, they are the ones with the thing. They're invading uh, Arab countries. They are claiming to be Muslims when they're actually victimizing Muslims, and they're giving Muslims a bad name. You know, so uh, I think the little girl is hope, and she comes up to them. Who can stop these people? I don't know. I mean, America's trying. I guess the world doesn't like them, but. She, she, a little girl walks up to them fearlessly and gives them a rose, and they suddenly back away. So maybe it's in music, in innocence, in reminding people of the humanity, of the fact that they're killing children. I don't know if it works with these people. <laughs> Seems to me they don't have the conscience, but it's a good place to start. If a video like this affects one person who may have had the tendency to become one of the ISIS uh, people, then it's done a good job. Okay, are we ready to go to Lebanon, where I was born and raised? This is the, the highlight of the, uh, of the presentation for me. I'm not prejudiced at all, but the best music in the world comes from Lebanon. The best people in the world come from Lebanon. And the best country in the world is Lebanon. And I say that, like, just, uh, you know, very objectively, right? And so I had a very nice childhood in Lebanon by the Mediterranean. And I always prided myself that out of all the Arab countries, Lebanon has always been the most liberal. So till today, you know, it's like, you know, they're always creating uh, waves. So Lebanon, of course, still has a corrupt government and all this stuff going on. It's in no way like this ideal society, but they jump on the bandwagon of the Arab Spring. Not so much to talk about, I mean, they talk against the government a lot, which is good, and they have the freedom of speech to do that. But they use the Arab Spring to talk about issues relating to sexuality. And so you've got a group that came out of some uh, university in Beirut, they're called Mashrua Layla, translated as the Layla Project. I saw them in Lebanon five years ago. They were this little local band performing at a wedding. Nobody was listening to them. And I go, I went up to them, I'm like, you guys are amazing. You're singing about like, you know, LGBT rights. You're singing about women's rights. You're like this, this amazing group of Lebanese kids. And, and you're gonna go far. And they're like, yeah, come on, sir. <laughs> we live in Lebanon, you know, there's no like record companies. I came back and I like flooded the airways with Masrulayla. I loved them so much. Well, fast forward to two months ago, they were in San Francisco, sold out, you couldn't get a ticket. The audience was like, you know, 50% American, you know, and, and different nationalities and 50% Arab Americans. So they have such a huge following there. And they dare talk about issues that, you know, in some countries you can't talk about. And the lead singer, Hamid Sinno, God bless him and protect him, he came out as gay. In the Arab world, a singer, you know. In Saudi Arabia, had you been in Saudi Arabia? It's, it's capital punishment. And so in Lebanon, so he's kind of like, he tours a lot, but it, I don't think he's going to go to Saudi Arabia <laughs> anytime soon. Let me give you an idea who the Shurayla are. This is going to, this is going to give you a... Welcome back. The Arab Spring has seen old regimes crumble and new voices fill the political vacuum. Right across the Middle East, young people are making themselves heard. Among them is a band from just across the border here in Lebanon, which is challenging the social taboos. And as Yarabu Mellon reports, fans across the Middle East are lapping it up. Performing in Jordan's capital Amman 
at its historic Citadel. There isn't homosexuality and sexuality in general and really taboo. Yeah, but we had amazing reactions. I, I a lot more than I thought we would. I thought people would like, you know, <gasps> crucify me or whatever, burn me at the stake for it. Um, and a part of me even wanted that to happen to sort of just validate all that, like, the anger I had or whatever. Most people, at least the people that have verbalized their sentiments to me, have been really, really, really positive about it. There's a bit of hating online, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I love her, I saw that in a gay band. And it's bossing. Um, but apart from that, it's, it's the same everywhere. We get a lot of people who, who like the song, who are moved by it. So here's one of their songs. And who knows the group, the Gorillas? Are you too young to oh, know? Do you know the Gorillas? Yeah. Do you know they had this, the Gorillas have a song called um, Clint Eastwood? I, I remember seeing something like that. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe even the Gorillas. You're too, like, you guys are so young. The Gorillas is like, you know, they're like this mysterious <coughs> group, and they released a song called Clint Eastwood. So Masur Leila took the song Clint Eastwood and made it Clint Middle Eastwood. So that it applies to their situation. They kept the melody, they changed the words to make it apply to them. Here, here they are, here it's the, uh, There is something, there's a gay symbol in this video. I wonder if you'll be able to see it, if you look real close. <laughs> show you in this video I guess I can't find the part he's wearing rainbow socks oh. so he's like he's wearing this white thing right and rainbow socks and he kept, kept going like this and you know the censors over there will not let like a gay flag go or something that censor it but uh, the rainbow socks became emblematic and, and his their videos they always have something tucked away in the back that represents you know LGBT people in some way so, thank God the censors aren't that hip or clever to know what symbolizes that these days. Um, so, um, I'm going to go from Lebanon to uh, Syria, because I think that's where a lot of the stuff is happening uh, right now. And uh, Omar Ofendo. So, Nate, who's Omar Ofendo? A rapper. He's a rapper. He's a Syrian-American rapper who released a CD called Syrian Americana, and he sings against President Assad in Syria and the Assad regime. His most famous song to date is called uh, Hashtag Syria. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
solidarity with all your fellow citizens. Peacefully protest and burn the end to all the villains. Tortured and imprisonment, murdering of innocence. Proving that this lie of leaders rule is illegitimate. Like father, like son, mouse through a president. Censoring the people, trying to stop the embezzlement. Heavy handed iron fist. Yeah, so you, you know him. Yeah. yeah, he's coming to. And, and he sings in English and in Arabic. So his songs also appeal, I think, to American audiences without translation. Let me move to the Palestinian territories. Of course, you know, um, I'm not talking about Israel. I'm talking about you're either under Israeli occupation, uh, Gaza included. And so, of course, with the Arab Spring, they thought they'd get some momentum too and draw attention to their situation. So there's a group named DAM, D-A-M, and it means blood in Arabic, but it also could mean like, like, um, to last for a long time. And so here they are singing a song called Change Tomorrow about the situation of Stanford, they got invited and they came and performed here. Uh, it's very difficult for a lot of Palestinians to come because they're not issued exit visas and a lot of times if they come here or leave um, the occupied territory territories, they can't go back. You know, they won't let them back in. So they're there. Um, certainly I'm not saying all Jews this or all Muslims that, but I'm talking about the Israeli government's policies towards Gaza and towards some of the occupied territories. And uh, do I have till 4.30? Is but that my time, Eric? 4.45. 4.45, because I'd like to have like, a little discussion at the end. I'm dying to hear which videos they're going to tell me it was the best one. <laughs> um, but uh, but uh, let me uh, end on a more positive note. Now that we've gotten a little idea of what is going on in terms of music of the Arab Spring. Um, so the, the main thing that is happening right now is the sectarian wars that are going on based on religion, not just Christian versus Muslim, but also within Islam, Shia versus Sunnah. Uh, I, I grew up in like Lebanon, we had Shia friends, so I didn't know who was who, like I didn't care, I didn't know. I didn't even know if somebody was Christian or Muslim, they were so nice. Then with the civil war in Lebanon, people started going, oh wait a second, do you want to come to my party? Which district do you live in? Oh, that's kind of a Christian district. Are you Orthodox or Christian, Christian or Catholic Christian? You know, so it was awful once that started happening. The Lebanese people kind of fell victim to it. The civil war ended. We are back at a better place now because we did never want to repeat that. But of course, a lot of outside powers are exerting their. You know, so you got Iran involved in Lebanon trying to push the Shiites, and uh, you've got Saudi Arabia involved in Lebanon trying to push the Sunnis, and so. You know, the situation in Lebanon right now is okay, but I worry about tomorrow. So what I like is when singers uh, try to sing in a way that brings religions together. So I'm going to end with two very short clips. One is by a Lebanese girl. Her name is uh, Tanya Qassis. You know what she dared do? She brought the Muslim call to prayer that you hear five times a day or if you're in a Muslim country on the microphones all over, telling people, you know, because they pray five times a day, so it reminds them, Allahu Akbar, you know, that one. Oh. And then she took the Ave Maria, and she put them together. And people were like, what? She's mixing Christianity with Islam, and she's like, check out how good they go together. And, uh, and certain, some people were offended, 
And some people said if there were more of this kind of uh, re reconciliation between the two, then there wouldn't have been a civil war at all. So here she is singing the Islamo Christian of <coughs> Some people call this video blasphemous. How dare she take the Muslim call to pray and fix it without him, right? I, I love it. I love that. Even if it doesn't sound perfect, it's like this attempt to say, hey, it's a call to prayer here and a call to prayer here, and they pray to the same God, you know, for, for those who believe in God. And so uh, uh, the last one I'm going to end with is another Tanya. Her name is Tanya Saleh this time, and also from I Lebanon. So this one is called Omar and Ali. Omar and Ali. Uh, do you know which one is the Shia, which one is the Sunni? I mean, they're both Muslims. But usually, the name Ali, 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 is a very popular Shia name. And so I think what 90% of people named Ali are probably Muslim Shia. And so it's the typical name for a Shia person. And then you got Omar, which is a typical Sunni name. They're both Muslims, they both believe in God and the Qur'an and the Prophet and all this, but there was like a, a dispute, and I won't go into that now, about uh, you know, a man named Ali and whether he was a legitimate heir, etc. And so what she does, this is not her, <laughs> this is her guitarist, uh, she, she, she goes, hey, let's pretend you're a Sunni, okay, you're Omar, take out Eric, right, Omar, and you are Ali, and I'd be like, Yo, Omar, get up. Talk to Ali over there. Stop, like, mad-mouthing each other and creating, like, um, bridges, I mean, creating walls between you two. You're both of the same faith. And so it's called Omar and Ali, and I'll end with that one, hopefully. If more people listen to this song in the Middle East, maybe they'll go, wait, Omar and Ali are both Muslims. It makes it even worse to fight.
you get the, the idea about, hey, Omar talked to Adi. If only they would talk, we wouldn't have half the problems in the Middle East that we do today. So, of course, if you look at your list, I've also included at the end, uh, you know, um, uh, the narcissist, the very last one, definitely worth uh, checking out. He's an Iraqi. Rapper. So, of course, with everything going on in Iraq, he does amazing stuff. And maybe as we pack to leave, I'll play the narcissist as, as we go. But please, if you liked any of these, check them out. More importantly, my email is up here. Send me your reaction. Tell your friends. Let's spread the message that the Arab world, as chaotic as it may seem, as scary as it seems to most people, has a vibrant music scene and has amazing young people such as yourselves who are just doing amazing stuff despite their land. Come to the concerts in October. <coughs> so uh, we'll end with the narcissist. But before that, Eric, out of all the videos, which one stands out in your head? Or it could be the singer, it could be the song, it could be the video or the lyrics. I would say... I thought I, I liked Omar Fendom and O. Hennero. Yeah. So, you're a real rapper, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, so Omar Fendom, check him out. A lot of other videos. I put another one, I think, with Shadia Mansour. It's a duet worth watching. And, and again, October, I'll take you backstage after the show and say, This young man loves your music. What about you, Nate? I know you knew Omar Fendom already. Was uh, Yusrael Hawari the, the. The accordionist? Yeah, yeah, I liked her. Really, yeah. yeah. But don't go peeing on walls. No. <laughs> 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 what about you, Lon? Uh, Ramya Sam. Really? Yeah. Why? Um, I love that you love him. I don't, you know, I don't know. I think it's just like, even after he's been tortured down to stripped of his humanity, he's still able to uh, sing and speak and still stand up. And yeah. I, I like that courageousness, I guess. Yeah. Check out the documentary, The Square. Yeah. I think it's a free on Netflix. Uh, among other places. And yeah, what did you think? Oh, I liked a lot of them, but yeah, like Ram Ram is one Ooh, of them. Both yeah. of you. I also <laughs> enjoyed karaoke and like Omar Fendoms too. Yeah, Good. Omar Fendoms is like a favorite. Good. Like people watch two seconds and they love them. <laughs> and what about you, John? Did you? Um, I went to the beginning where it was um, <sighs> video live because I like it yeah, when they come out after the situation to to sing and talk about it and rather than being having a college than singing on safe stage because I feel like the feelings they in what they sing live are a lot more raw and passionate. That's what I like. Yeah, I, I love that because that is the real feeling. That is the real song. Once you take it into the studio and we rehearse it and it's perfect and there's no, you know, sounds in the background or it's like, you know, man-made suddenly. It takes away from the authenticity of the moment. And that's why I tried, like, at least with Amal Mathlusi to show her, I, you know, you can kind of look to find the actual videos. They're going to be low quality. They're going to be, you know, shaky. But they move you more than when you see her standing in Sweden in front of the Nobel Prize Committee singing elegantly. Same song, but I too, I too love those because that's the moment. Unfortunately, the moment cannot be re uh, recreated, uh, you know, especially in Tunisia where things are much better now. So, you know, maybe as she plays, as she sings, I think she should have in the back the video of her, at least even without the vo volume, but so we remember this is the same young woman who started out risking her life in the streets. So you liked Aman Mathluthi and you liked uh, El General. So you like Tunisian Arabic music. Thank you. Nura <laughs> is over here from Tunisia. You should uh, friend her and she'll take you to visit Tunisia one day. She's, she, her family is there. And uh, was there anything you wanted to say before we uh, adjourn? Oh, wait, yeah, I have feedback for so don't leave. Oh, you're gonna give people feedback? Um, um, yeah, it's like so they can like right. comment on. Am them. I supposed to leave the room while they? Oh no! no, 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 no. <laughs>